welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu. And listen, you know, it's not often that I get a photographer and artist come on the show. Uh, today, I'm speaking with Brooke Shaden, who is a photographer based in Arizona. And she's so well known. Uh, she's been on Creative Live. And among other things, she's also going to be coming to Connecticut, where I live, uh, which is uh, like a huge bonus for me because, you know, I don't usually get to meet people uh, like Brooke who are just worldwide, worldwide, I guess known worldwide. And uh, she, she's coming over to, to speak with the CTPPA folks to talk about her art. And I said, let's talk about your art before you get to talk about your art with the other folks. So, uh, Brooke, thank you so much for joining me. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much. With that long introduction, I got to say, you know, I, as I've said before recording, I'm a little nervous about asking you about your art because as a photojournalist, um, my background suggests that I just photograph what's in front of me and I photograph things that are happening as, a, as they happen versus manufacturing them or uh, I guess directing them or even putting them together in Photoshop. Um, yeah. You do all of that and just so phenomenally well um, thank you <laughs> I, you know when i when you sent me the 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 images that you sent me and uh, each one requires such a long study um uh, obviously it took you a lot a, a long time to put together uh to design to create to even conceptualize so let's talk about all of that what is your process for making art well, for me, it's all about the conceptualization. So I try to spend a lot of time really thinking about how exactly I want the image to look in the end. I am mostly inspired by imagination and dreams and things like that. So it makes sense for me to sort of think ahead instead of waiting to have that dream. I, I sort of envision it as I live and then and then try to create that. So I spend usually, I would say, um, anywhere from a day to a week, sometimes even months, coming up with a concept. Um, I do a lot of sort of revisions of that. So I'll write out um, paragraphs about what I want it to look like, what meaning I want it to have, and so on. I'll do little sketches and things like that. And then once I have every detail envisioned in my mind, I typically then go out and shoot. So shooting only lasts, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes is average because oh, wow. In that case, I've already sort of, I already know what I need. I'm not playing around on set, really. I'm just taking a few images as I envisioned it and then moving on to editing, which usually takes, I would say, minimum two hours, um, upwards of 30 to 40 sometimes if it's a really intense edit. Uh, it, it, what you've just told me is that there's, a, there's a, an immense amount of planning that goes into what you do. You know, it's, yeah, it's sometimes. Not Oh, I see. Okay. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there is no planning. <laughs> so there's, let me say this, there's always planning. Um, because I will never just pick up my camera and start shooting if I don't know why I'm taking a picture. But there are times when I'll go out hiking, for example, and just stare at a spot for 20 minutes until I've got the idea and then I'll shoot. So it's not always a really long process, but it's always, um, I would just say very well planned out beforehand, no matter how long that takes. So again, I'm trying to get what you're trying to say is that there's there's a incredible amount of intent built into your image. Exactly. Right. Yes. Uh, but there's also meaning, and that seems to be meaning that's somewhat personal in in scope. Is that right? Yes. In, yes and no, I'll say, actually, because it, it always has a personal flair to it. There's always something that I am drawn to because it relates to my life or a philosophy that I believe in. Mm -hmm. But then I sort of try to go beyond that and say, well, this is how I feel toward the concept, but how will other people perceive that as well? And then I try to sort of build the idea around both of those you know, opinions that will go into it in the end. So it's personal at the beginning and then it becomes universal at the end. Yeah, I, I'm really one of those artists that likes to share their work. So I feel like the public discourse about it is just as important as how I felt creating it. So I want to create something that other people will relate to and feel something toward. 
Okay. So is your work that, you, that you're sharing, is that predominantly only online or do you have museums and gallery shows and things like that? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. I always, I pretty much always start online. So I'll create the work and then when I feel comfortable with it, post it online. Um, but I also have galleries that represent me. So um, they all have, you know, a certain amount of my works and we have shows pretty regularly. So, um, so that's another component to it, certainly. Is there a, uh, do, do you standardize the way your art is, uh, received and appreciated and I guess in a way consumed I hate that word but it's it's, it's sort of a like uh, experienced let's put it that way you know do you have a way that says you, you you know you work with your art and they're all at the same size perhaps or the same dimensions same orientations and things like that because the yeah. images, images you sent me are all all seem to be fairly square and yep. format is that intentional as well it is. It is. I do only square works, and that's from day one when I started photography. I was looking at photographs on Flickr to begin with, and that's when I sort of started getting into photography. And what I noticed was that I was consistently drawn to images that didn't look like pictures, and they looked more like paintings. And so my thought process was, if I can sort of take away that standard two to three ratio of a photograph, then maybe people won't focus on what the medium is, but instead look at the message. You have, interestingly, uh, degrees in film and English and um, from Temple University. I'm reading this from your bio here. Yeah. Um, how have they helped you in doing what you do? Tremendously. And, you know, in the beginning, I think that it's easy to graduate college and then say, well, I don't know why I did all of that because now <laughs> I'm not even using it. Yeah. But I don't think that's actually true for me. Um, filmmaking helped of, in many ways. I mean, it's so related to photography, just in terms of first understanding what aperture was. So I wasn't so intimidated when I picked up a camera um, to having screenwriting classes that did wonders for understanding how to build a character. And then English, I've always just loved literature and I've loved finding symbolism inside of literature so I took that with me as well and wanted to put that into my work I, I, I sort of figured as much you know that you've brought such amazing stories within your your, your square frame uh, and it clearly must have been inspired in some way from what you've actually experienced in school perhaps um, let's talk a little bit about your blog uh, interestingly it's called promoting passion yes yeah <laughs> I mean it's such an active sort of like a positive blog title for a for a blog you know uh, what what I guess motivated you to create something like that well I'll, I'll start with a story from a long time ago in in terms of my life I suppose about five or six years ago I started creating photographs for the first time and uh, people were sort of saying um, you know you're so different from your art your art's so dark and it's so edgy and you're so happy and upbeat and and I at first thought that that was wrong that I should be dark and edgy and you know look just like my art looks and dye my hair black or something like that but um, <laughs> but I realized that it, how I create and how I live were two very different entities in my life. So I started to sort of realize that while creating photographs was one passion, inspiring others to create whatever they want was my other passion. So I decided to create a blog that would um, sort of use my photography as an example of how I live, but then speak to larger issues and um, philosophies about, you know, the ways that I think are healthy to live. So my blog is a marriage between those two things, um, just encouraging others to promote passion in their lives and in the lives of others. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, segueing right into that, I have to ask you, there's a blog post I've been reading where you, you, you state that you go to India uh, on an annual basis to, to photograph there, obviously, but also to help people uh, in yeah. Calcutta. Can you tell us a little bit about that, uh, that venture for you? Yes. Well, that started about three years ago. I got um, just sort of a, a random email one day from a woman who runs an organization over there called Blossomy. And she wrote to me and she said that she puts on creative workshops for survivors of human trafficking and women in shelter homes there. She wondered if I would come over and teach. So we got to talking about it and I made my first trip over there to India and I taught a group of about 10 uh, women. And so we went through this process of um, self-portraiture. We talk, talked a lot about storytelling and how to use yourself as a character in an image. And once I got through with that process, I realized a couple of things. And one was that uh, I love teaching that, that 
I think that photography, especially self-portraiture, is really empowering and can be used as a healing tool. But then I also realized that I was now leaving Calcutta after, you know, two weeks of being there. And I wondered if I would really have a lasting impression there or not. And so that's why now I've been there three times and I'll be back in October. But this October is going to be a little bit different because I'm helping to start a school there for photography. So it's officially opening in October. So now I can not only go over there and teach myself portraiture and sort of healing endeavors there, but also they can take that and a practical knowledge of photography with them in a more long-term way. Wow, fantastic. That's phenomenal. I know you are uh, seeking donations towards a school. And yes. uh, what I will do is I will definitely link to the page where you mentioned all of that. I hope folks who are listening will step up and, and make that donation, make that happen for, Thank for, you. for Brooke and her, her school in, in Calcutta. Um, one of the things uh, you know that organizations like the CTPPA does and does so well is bring people like you and 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 have you present to us i'm just curious what what do you have in store for us uh in a couple of days well we're going to be talking about storytelling first and foremost a little bit so i hope to have it be a very hands-on section with everybody writing notes and jumping up and down maybe not jumping up and down but doing a lot of um, activities so we're going to be talking about storytelling first and then uh building a set uh, there that we're all going to photograph. So we're going to take the stories that we wrote and put a little bit of our personality into a set that we're going to design and photograph and then edit a little bit of too. Well, that sounds exciting. You're going to actually put a set together? Yes, we are. I'm so excited for oh, it. Wow. Now, this reminds me of, of your creative live uh, classes, the courses. Uh, it, it's sort of, is it sort of in the same vein in terms of trying to put everything together uh, sure. really for the audience to watch you in, in, in production kind of thing? Right. Yeah. I mean, we're all going to be up there building the set together, but yeah, sure. yeah that's how I work. So, um, you know, I don't really get to go into studios where there's already this amazing set and then I just go photograph it. So um, I'm usually outside on location in nature and just pulling together whatever I can in that space. And so that's what I like to teach as well. Awesome. Excellent. Brooke, it's such a pleasure to, to speak with you. Uh, you put me, me at ease, uh, you know, knowing that uh, and on, on Tuesday, April 21st, I'm going to be able to take notes and enjoy the, the presentation and really get something out of it. Uh, I've always said that, you know, photography should be uh, from a from a source of intent and from a source of meaning for people, uh, whether it's for you, uh, hopefully it's for you personally and first, uh, and then hopefully universally as you've just uh, produced work uh, all consistently. You know, it it's got to be that way. I think otherwise, you know, I think the industry is gonna is gonna suffer. I mean, we, you know, we we are we are a nation, perhaps even a society of uh, selfie takers, and I think yeah. we've got to move away from that and into making making real art and you do that so really well um, thank you so thank you so much for inspiring us appreciate thank you it. i appreciate it thank you so much break we'll see you soon okay take care bye bye